We'll be looking at uh, a life of service this morning. A life of service. And uh, the first uh, text we'll be looking at is from the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And it says that for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. <clears throat> for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. To be a masterpiece is to be is to be valuable. It's also to be valued as well. Unique and outstanding. So if they say, this fellow, this house, this painting, whatever it is, is a masterpiece. It's going to be outstanding. When we are now God's masterpiece, then we become super outstanding. If you permit me to use that word because God is behind that. So it goes so every genuine child of God in other words is super outstanding because you're a child of God. Because that person who is a child of God has been adopted into God's family. And it makes all the difference when we are adopted into the family of God. You see, many times we, it's become so familiar, if I may use that word, that, you know, child of God, you know. It's kind of lost its meaning. Look at the committee of nations all over the world. Some nations are trying to join some other committees because if they can join that block, then they become superpowers. So they scramble and they do all kinds of things so that they can be a part they can have membership in that larger group. It makes all the difference. And I know you know about a few powerful families. Everything they do makes the news. And you're wondering, what is it that they are doing that I can't do? But well, the difference is because they are born into that family. It makes all the difference. But the family that you and I are adopted into is the most powerful family in the world. is the richest family in the world. Is the most connected family in the world. We don't see that way, but that's the truth. That is the family that we have been adopted into. Our father, your father, my father, is the richest. He has all the power.
So you are outstanding. God says you are outstanding. You are. But not only are you adopted into God's family, if you are a genuine child of God, not only are you adopted into God's family, you have the Spirit of God. I tell you, that is a game changer. I pray God will have mercy on us. Because we are sitting on a treasure, and yet we don't realize it. You see, this spirit of God that we are speaking about is the same spirit that was in Daniel. You know Daniel in the Old Testament? Let me tell you what they said about Daniel. Daniel 6.3. He says, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. The same spirit, we have it. This is why you are outstanding. God says you are outstanding. Rightly so. But you see, we must start to see ourselves the way God sees us. Daniel, we know his history. He was a captive. From Judah, landed in Babylon, yet honored by kings. Preferred above princes. But we must pause a little bit. Why must we pause? We must pause and remind ourselves that we are outstanding only because of the grace and the mercy of God. That's the only reason. It is Jesus that qualifies us. He is the one that makes us outstanding. And it is by his grace and it is by his mercy. You know, there was a gentleman called Uzziah, King Uzziah in the Bible. The Bible says that he was marvelously helped. It's important we keep reminding ourselves because if not, we can, you know, veer off a little bit. And begin to think, oh, maybe I'm the one making things happen. No. Uzziah was marvelously helped. So the scripture says. And then he became powerful. And then he became proud. And that led to his downfall. So we must always pause and remind ourselves. We haven't done anything to earn or deserve this. It is just by God's grace and God's mercy. Because in the past, we knew who we were. We were sinners, obeying the devil, anti-God. Anti-God. But for God's mercies, he sent Jesus into the world to pay the penalty for our sins. He's saying that if we would acknowledge that we are sinners and we will repent of our sins and turn to him, that he will forgive us. He would adopt us into his family. He will give us his Holy Spirit. What more does a man need? You know, I met a lady recently in Kotmandin. Kotmandin is just behind there. And we were chatting. And she said something to me. He says, I am hedging my bet. I said, he's dead on arrival. Because God cannot be mocked. You're hedging your bet. We were there for almost 45 minutes. Just both of us. And I could tell that God was speaking to her. 
I could tell. In fact, she told me herself. But for one reason or the other, it will look like we're finishing the conversation and then she will ask her that question again. She said to me, she said, look, I have a friend. That's her friend now. That they were colleagues, you know, where she works or where she used to work. And the fellow, you know, died. And that she attended the funeral that, you know, when she dies, she wants to be buried like that. But the person is a Christian. I said, you're not a Christian. Hedging your bed. The reason why I'm saying that is that maybe there are one or two people who are here today. Don't hedge your bet. And I told her, I said, look, with the way we are going with this conversation, she was going to buy medication. From medication, we spent 45 minutes. I said, with the way we are going, God is on your radar. But you see, if you leave here without committing, that's it. Because there's an enemy who will steal those words from your heart. Strike while it's still hot. But it will look like she was going to, and then she come out. I said, my God. Salvation is by grace alone. It's not by works. Through faith in the anointed one. But God has prepared work for every child of his to do. And it is important that you and I find our place in our local body of Christ, particularly our church. So if you're here and you haven't connected, now it's not a recruitment drive. I hope you know that. No, I'm, nobody's recruiting anything. You see, you, you, if you study what is going on here, you know, it's about preparing a people for the Lord. That's what all we're doing is about. It's not about recruitment. No, no, not at all. So that we are prepared for his coming. Find your place. Here. You know that the CEO of the church is Jesus. He is the chief executive officer. So if he's the CEO and you are missing in action, God have mercy on you. To whom much is given. Much is required. Let's look at Romans quickly. Romans chapter 12, from verses 1 to 13. It says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given you. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. 
If it is given, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. The list is endless. The list is endless. So I'm sure you can find something for yourself there. But you see that in terms of service, some services are mandatory for Christians. While some you find out that they have giftings. We don't all have the same giftings. You know, so we can't all do the same thing. But when it comes to some aspects of the service, some of them are generic. We are all supposed to be doing those things. And it starts with worship. From that passage you've read, everyone is required to worship God. In lieu of the mercy of God. In lieu of all that he has done for us. is the least that we can do. Worship. But worship, of course, we've been doing that this morning. Excellent, fantastic. We give thanks. We've done that this morning. Excellent. We are supposed to be a people of gratitude. Always showing gratitude to God. But do we know that if we are doing all that and we are not obeying him, it's not worship. Worship is in its entirety. Everything. Your bodies, your eyes, your hands, your everything, your heart. Everything. So that's the first thing that God requires. And it's mandatory and it's generic. It's not as if it's for some people, it's for everybody. But you see, to approach service, it's important that we realize that we have to be humble. And that's what Romans was saying to us in verse 3. We must approach it with a sense of humility. A sense of humility. Or else we'll get it wrong. It says we should evaluate ourselves. Don't think that you are bigger than you are. So says the scriptures. A call to humility. And then you see that, that you also have duties towards one another. Because when we say that we love God, it's love for God and love for others. So we're supposed to be serving one another. And there are many, many ways we can do that. In this local, many expressions of service here. And if we have missed one out, create your own. Create yours. Because I know that there's still more coming. So if there's something where we ought to be doing and we're not doing it, initiate it. We see there that God has given us different abilities. Different abilities. As we're seated, different abilities. Some are serving God with their eyes. Did you know that? We have people who are our security there. They're paying attention around. With their eyes. If they see anything that is not familiar or doesn't look right, they escalate it. That's a form of service. Because we are here, comfortable here, worshipping God, but there are people out there doing the work and they are serving with their eyes. So we don't all have to serve with words. That's the point I'm trying to bring out. 
Some are serving with their hands. You see them at the top there. Some come in here on Saturdays to clean the toilet. I'm just giving you examples now. So many ways we can serve. And it's all service to God. Intercessory prayer. Everyone can pray. If someone said to me, pray so that you will not need to pray. I'm still trying to decode the meaning of that thing up to now. And they say fast so you know everyone can pray. Oh. Everyone can pray. Intercessory prayer. We meet here Fridays, virtually now, not physically, virtually 10.30 to 12. Every Friday. Come, let's pray. Sharing the gospel. Personal evangelism, corporate. You see, this is how God, this is how I see it. And I stand to be corrected. You love God. God says, love me with all your heart and love your neighbor as How do you want to explain that you love your neighbor and you're not sharing the gospel with them and they're going to hell? It's not possible. So what kind of love is that? There's no way you can say you love somebody and they're heading to hell and you're saying, keep going. It's not possible. And these are the things that God will query from us. That what did you use your time for? Only two commandments. Love the Lord your God. Love your neighbor as yourself. And yet we haven't. Okay, okay, let's even, don't even, even invite them to church. Just say, you know what? Our church is doing a barbecue. You know, they grind. Come. Or there's a celebration service on Sunday. Even if it's that we're going to do. It's something. There's work for us to do. Tithe and offering, it's a form of service. Because that is how the place is run. You see, it's beautiful. It's all nice. And comfy as well. I'll be, you know, proud to bring people here. I say, this is my church. People are comfortable. They can listen. They can digest. They can process things. We've got facilities. But all these things, you know the way it is. And then also meeting the needs of others. And when we talk about meeting the needs, it's not just about the you know, financial side of things. And if that is it, all well and good. But you see that somebody, you just sense that all is not well with this person. You reach out in prayer. You reach out to encourage them. That is what we are called to do. How are you serving me? And how am I serving you? First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians three verses ten to fifteen. Because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it. But whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. Anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials. Gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. But on the judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, 
that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. I know the pastor had shared this before, earlier in the year. And I think it's very clear. There will be a judgment for believers where they will reward. And some, unfortunately, will suffer loss. You will not suffer loss in Jesus' name. You know, if I were to ask you a question now, what you know now secularly, let's use that as an example. What you know now secularly, if you knew that 25 years ago, would you be where you are now? What you know now, the information that's available to you, you know, things that, if you knew that 25 years back, if you knew the economy was going down this direction, no. there would have been things that would have done well. There would have been areas we would have gone into, maybe career-wise, maybe business-wise, because you could see into the future. Alas, where we are. On that day, too, many will be saying, ah, if only I just done one more hour of washing the toilet. If only I just done uh, a bit of evangelism. If only I just come to prayer meeting. Because all those things are being recorded and reward is coming. Our works and service are likened to the objects listed. Some have more value than others. And so you, you know, the precious metals, and you talk about the wood and the hay. Only those things that last through the fire, such as metal objects, will be rewarded. And what matters to us or to God now is our love for him, our love for others, the motive for why we do certain things. Because God is always looking at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance. But God is checking the heart. Now why are you doing what you are doing? And also, maximizing our giftings. Some of us might be operating at 5 over 10 when God says it's 10, 10. Those things will be checked out. Are you doing your best? Am I doing my best? Can I do a bit more than I'm doing now? So any gift any talent, whatever it is that God has blessed us with, we should use it locally. And we're supposed to make ourselves available. Now the barbecue is coming up next week. Maybe this will be a little more test. So we know Kenny. Kenny? Is Kenny there? No, Kenny is not here. But we know Kenny. Kenny's come to, you know, to speak this morning. If you haven't plugged into something, please do Barbecue is not just for eating, you know. For the reason for it is outreach. A ask anybody. It's just a way to gather momentum. But the main aim of that thing is outreach. So the ones who are doing face painting, maybe you're artistic. Plug in with Amanda. It's all service. We must seize every opportunity to serve from today. From today. Every opportunity you have here in the local church, even in our offices, mostly limited to here. Take it to the marketplace.
to be fruitful in service, there are four key areas that we need to identify. Don't start by saying, I want to be spirit-filled. You've, you've messed up the whole thing. The first thing is that make yourself available. Availability is key. Just come as you are. Make yourself available. And then, faithful. And then, be spirit-filled. And then, be teachable. But the first thing first is that it, there's no point in you being anointed and then for three months we don't see you. There's no point for that anointing because you're not going to be able to use it. But come. And don't say, oh, I don't have what it takes. Just come. In the process of you coming and waiting on the Lord, God will anoint you. A life of service. In conclusion, Ephesians 2.10 For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. How are we doing in achieving Ephesians 2.10? God bless us. Let us pray. How are we doing? Our Father and our God, we thank you. Lord, you have created us in your image. Lord, we just heard again that we are your masterpiece. Lord, to be a physical masterpiece to our fellow men and women is great. But Lord, creator of heaven and earth, all good, all powerful, you made us a masterpiece in Christ Jesus. We pray, Lord, that we will submit to you 100%. There's no partial masterpiece. We completed the work, Lord Jesus. Lord, we come to you. Help us, not just to be hearers, but to be doers. We want to be disciples, followers of Jesus. We thank you also for the avenue you've given us to repent of our sins and move forward. Lord, thank you. A life of service. Help us, Lord, to display your glory. Yes, Lord. There's no need having wonderful flowers under the bottom of the ocean. There's nobody to, ad to admire them there. Lord, Help us to give you glory, to live a life that gives you glory, to help others, to tell others about you and why you came to save us and what you can do in their lives. Thank you for the opportunity to have limbs, to be well as well. Help us to continue, continuously surrender to you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.